All right, well, we kind of got used to that in sports here. Rick Green, let me bring you in here. Are you interested in the Olympics and what's happening? Because here's the irony of this this game, these games in Tokyo. Uh, at the end, they'll hand the torch off to the next Olympic Games, which will be Beijing. <laughs> Uh, man, I got to tell you, Greg, it's bittersweet for me. I used to love watching the Olympics, and, and I probably will still watch a little bit of it, but, you know, the, the, the crazy stuff, the anti-American athletes that are competing for America, it's, it's hard for me to stomach, to be honest with you. And I've never rooted against the Americans in the Olympics before, but I was so glad to see the women's soccer team lose three to nothing the other day. They've been anti-American, the, the things they've done and said, the arrogance, the self-promotion, not the kind of athletes that we like to promote in America. So it's tough. I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I, I hope we get some good stories out of the Olympics. Usually it's a heartwarming, you know, you get these really good um, stories of people coming from nothing and overcoming and becoming, you know, uh, superheroes to all of us waving the American flag. I hope we get some of that in this woke culture. We'll see right now. We're just getting, you know, Jill Biden running around in her mask, even though she's been vaccinated. I don't know how many times, but a lot uh, yet. She still wears the mask to virtue signal. So we continue to be the most highly educated idiots in history, and it makes it hard for me to watch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. While here's the irony of this. While this is going on, uh, Cuba is fighting for freedom. Yeah. And our nation could be doing more to help them, even getting some kind of Internet signal for those people there so that the stories of what they're facing could get out. I mean, we got marchers and protesting the Olympics and there's a real life struggle in Cuba. Rick. Yeah, you know, and I think those stories I was talking about, the feel-good stories where you see people coming from difficult situations, yearning for freedom, uh, yearning to be a blessing to other people, we're probably going to see more of that coming out of Cuba over the next few months than we will even out of our own nation. I love seeing what's happening in Florida with the folks that are standing with Cuba, uh, with the individuals in Cuba that want freedom, um, and even seeing the American flag waved in Cuba, uh, perhaps more than even by some of these Olympic, Olympic athletes. Love you. They love you in uh, Cuba, Rick. Ricardo Verde, they call him. <laughs> uh, Rick, people are wanting to train their children to get rid of this kind of teaching that we've got. Yeah. Your website, your company does a whole lot of it uh, with uh, the Constitution Coach. Tell us a little bit how you can help or how you, the parents can help their kids. Yeah, man, you know, we've got a nonprofit organization called Patriot Academy that's been teaching young people for 20 years. I encourage people to go to that website today, patriotacademy.com. They can link to our Constitution courses. All of that is for free. Uh, we want to enable families to preserve liberty for the next generation. And so patriotacademy.com is a great place to get into some of those programs. I encourage you to do it. I want to thank you, Rick Green, for being with us today. Have a great weekend, sir. Most of all, I want to thank 